For this week's review, I'd like to uh, take a look at the Lockman New American Standard Bible, a large print, ultra-thin reference Bible in black calfskin. It's inside this sleeve. It's a felt sleeve with a protective flap. Before we do, though, we'll take a look at the box. My copy is uh, from 2007. I purchased it in 2009. And we can pretty much do the entire review from the box. Has all the key information printed here. The ISBN, or actually the 13 and the 10, and uh, it is Smythe sewn. Has high opacity paper to limit bleed through, and you'll see that the show through, show through is actually quite minor here. So we'll put the box to one side, and we'll take the Bible out of the sleeve. Some people complain about these sleeves. They don't understand why they were added, but I actually like them. I think they're a very good idea, and certainly back in the days before people had tablets with uh, protective sleeves that were commonly available, it was a nice addition. This is the book. To give you a sense for the dimensions, I will move this a bit out of the way, and we will compare the Bible with the Cambridge Cameo is taller than the Cameo, wider than the Cameo, and about the same thickness. And here is the Allen 53BR, the long primer in brown. So this uh, Logman has a much larger, wider text block anyway, and it's a bit taller also. You can see the difference between the art gilting here on the on the uh, Allen and the normal gilting here on the Lockman. And finally, here's essentially the same Bible, but from 2013 and in genuine leather. So this is another ultra-thin reference Bible in the New American Standard, but it's in genuine leather rather than calfskin. So the difference you see in thickness there is due to paper thickness. We'll look later at the print in the two and show you the difference and show through due to the difference in the paper. So book dimensions are 9 and 13 sixteenths inches tall, 7 and 1 16th inches wide, 1 and 11 16th inches thick. It is in two text columns. I believe this is exactly the same layout, the same um, text layout as you'll find in the New American Standard Readers that R.L. Allen prints. I've never seen one, so I don't know if it's as clean looking as that, if the paper's this high opacity. The um, text is laid out in two verse-by-verse -verse columns, as you see there. Each column is 54 millimeters wide. There are about 39 characters per line and as many as 59 lines of text per page. The pages are 235 millimeters tall, 164 millimeters wide. That converts in English units to nine and a quarter inches tall, 6.46 inches wide. The text is printed very crisply, I think, but it could be blacker. It seems like a dark gray to me. It is not line matched, but the opacity is so high that I don't know if you can actually tell that on your side, but take my word for it. This is definitely not line matched. It doesn't really matter here. The margins at the top is 13 millimeters. Uh, outer margin is about 19. At the bottom it's about 10. And the inner margin can be as much as 15, much less than that here. The font in the text, uppercase letters are about 10 points, lowercase are about 11. That's typical for a Bible font. Line height is 3.6 millimeters or 10.2 points, so it's commensurate with the height of the capitals. Line spacing, I think you'll agree, it looks pretty good. Tracking, I think, is good. And you very rarely find a line where the words are spaced in an awkward way, or say you have a lot of white space in there. Verse numbers are alongside the verses themselves. Added words are in italic font in the New American Standard, which is a nice addition. I like that in a more literal translation. 
when the New Testament quotes the Old Testament, the quotations are presented in all capital letters, which makes them very easy to find. The um, center column contains um, both translation notes and references. The center column is 20 millimeters wide, so from this line to that line is 20 millimeters. Remember, 25.4 millimeters for an inch. The font here is kind of small. It's a sans serif font, about seven points. These references are not the way I prefer them, which is in page order. The references towards the top of the page relate to the contents of the top of the page. Instead, they are in column order. So the references are following the left-hand column first, and then, say here where it says 2.1, they are for chapter 2, verse 1, here in Luke. So you'll find references down here that relate to the text up there. I think it would be better to try to do them in page order, but sometimes there's simply too many of them. Occasionally, in fact, the pages spill, um, the references spill out onto the lower right-hand corner of the page. There's simply too many of them. References in the New American Standard Bible, I think, are one of the key features, the key advantages to it. The paper is uh, very nice. It is uh, 43.9 microns thick. I estimate the paper weight at 40 GSM, so it might be a 38. There's a very light sheen. I'll see if I can show that to you here with the flashlight. I don't know if you can see, there is a, a little bit of a glimmer. It appears that you are seeing it right through here. The sheen kind of walks back and forth as I move the flashlight. But it's a very slight sheen. It's not very noticeable at all. It doesn't cause me to have to move my lamp, or change the angle of the paper. The paper is white with a little bit of a dusky tinge to it, not very much at all. Show through is not very bad. There's Holy Bible. I think you can see it. And that's what it looks like with a direct view. So this paper is opaque. Um, going back to the layout, there are no book introductions. There's Genesis, for instance, no book introduction to Genesis. I looked uh, very hard for print non-uniformity, although I do have a complaint that the print is not as black as it could be. I think generally it stays this darkness. There are um, book titles. And they are at the outside top of the page. The page contents are here. So you get a chapter number. Chapter 2 is where you're at on this page. You were on chapter 2 over here on the left-hand page as well. And in fact, chapter 2 starts on that page. Page numbers are in the center top of each page. There are headings in the text. They're in a bold, oblique 9.5 point font a little bit smaller than the uh, actual font in the text. Chapter numbers are large and bold, as we saw here. Um, new paragraphs are indicated by a bolder verse number, like so. Books of the Bible do begin on a separate page, so let's go back and look at the small books at the back of the Bible, where they are often if your Bible doesn't start them on a new page, then this is where you're most likely to find it easily. But the small books of Second John and Third John and Jude all begin on a separate page. If we go back to the Gospels, you'll see that the words of Christ are in black. I'm very happy about that because I'm not a fan of red letters. But if you are, I have nothing against you personally. Pronouns that refer to God are capitalized, so those that uh, refer to Christ, who is one of the three persons of the Holy Trinity, are in capital letters. And although I certainly uh, believe in the deity of Christ, I do not like the capitalization of pronouns that refer to deity for two reasons. It's just not standard English, and secondly, 
uh, where there's an ambiguity in the text. I prefer the translators to leave things amb ambigu ambiguous, and uh, that tends to be a, a clarification that I would prefer the translators not, to, not make. Poetry is printed in a line-by-line -line format, so here when they're quoting the Old Testament and what they're quoting is poetic, it's printed in a line-by-line -line format, and you see the same thing back here in the Psalms. So it's not like in your typical King James Version, where you have a verse-by-verse -verse printing. At the back of the Bible, after the book of Revelation, we come to the concordance. The concordance is 66 pages long. It's printed in three columns in a very small, well, rather small font, 6.5 points. So it seems to have quite a large number of entries. I have not attempted to count them all. So you do have a concordance in this. Then you have nothing separating the concordance from the first of your maps. They're printed on a glossy cardstock. There are eight maps. Actually, one of the eight maps is in two parts. They do not go into the gutter. Here's a two-part map. You can see the sheen there on the paper. Some people dislike that because they like to write on their maps. I have never been tempted to write on a map, so I don't mind the glossiness. After the maps, one, two, three, four sheets of card stock, and then the last page is glued to it. This is where the uh, lining is tabbed in. This is an edge line construction of sorts. This material that's in the liner seems to be almost tissue thin in places. And so you can see how thin it is right here where it tabs in to this uh, underneath this piece of paper which is glued to the following piece of paper. There is an article that I will put a link to below uh, at the Bible Design blog, especially about this Bible, where they talk about this construction. And I think the thinness of this has caused problems and probably a failure here for a number of people who've used their uh, copies much more than I have. This has been a light-use Bible for me, so mine is still intact. Let's talk about the head and tail bands. I think that might be in focus. You can see they're yellow and black. You have both head and tail. There's one black ribbon marker. It's nice. It's 10 millimeters wide, 34.8 centimeters long. So it's plenty long enough to come out here to the edge of the Bible, which is what you'd want. Binding is sewn. It lies open and fairly flat. Even in Genesis, let's get this out of the way so we can show that. So there we are up front. Holy Bible is the foreword, Old Testament. You can see a bit of a curvature on the left, so when you come over here towards Genesis chapter 2, you have this page lying, wanting to hang up a little bit, but it's all right, it's fairly flat. You get to the middle of the book, you'll see that there is a bit of a problem here. This page is, is, is uh, curving down towards the gutter, and the text on the right-hand side is too. The way to deal with that, of course, is to raise one side or the other. So if you're reading the left side, raise the right, and vice versa. <clears throat> and that will make things straighter for you. The cover is in uh, black calfskin. It feels a lot like uh, Church Bible Publishers ironed calfskin. When, you, when we saw the uh, edge here, the spine, you may have noticed the five raised hubs. So there are five of those. <clears throat> There's a tooled line that goes around the perimeter here, which roughly lines up with the text block. It's a bit uh, more towards the inside. <clears throat> in this era, at least, uh, and I think they still do Lockman prints, the ISBN, and the nature of the cover, along with their style number. 
on the cover, and some people don't think that's a very good idea. The edges of the pages are gilt, but not art gilt. In my copy, the text block is off-center, which you should be able to see there. See how much more flap you have on the right than on the left? Simply the way they came by 2007, when this was printed in China, they were already having quality control problems. But the text block itself, as you saw, is very nice. Let's go to the beginning of the book. And we have the four pages of cardstock. My ribbon, I normally keep the ribbon tucked in. You have a glossy piece of paper here. So this, this is the parallel to the glossy maps in the back. In the front you have a glossy presentation page and a blank page. Then several pages of family records and put truncated family trees in there, uh, births and deaths, occasions to remember, have a single page separating that from the title page. There is no half leaf, there's just the full title page and then the copyright page. So this is the 95 update. And mine, as you can see, is printed in 2007 and it's a second printing. So forward, which tells you a bit about principles of translation, tenses of Greek, general format. They talk about how they do person, uh, capitalized personal pronouns when they refer to deity. <coughs> Abbreviations and special markings. Oh, the asterisk in the New American Standard is used to indicate tenses. That would they've changed the tense and that the actual uh, verb is in present tense. Table of contents, as you see, the Apocrypha are not present, and they give you the books of the Bible in alphabetical order, which sometimes can be helpful if you have trouble locating one of the, say, the smaller or minor prophets. One page introducing the Old Testament, and you are at Genesis, and the time, local time, according to the church nearby, is 9 a.m. Now we'll take a close-up look at the font. We are in the book of Jonah. You're looking at verse 4, 9. And uh, you can see how clean it is. I just wish it were a bit darker and how little show through that you see there. So that and the fact that the paper is relatively flat makes for a very nice reading experience. First Bible I'm going to bring over is the 2013 printing of the same book. This is the one I showed you earlier in Genuine Leather. So here it comes. We'll see if we can put the text next to it and see how much darker it is on the right and how much more show through you have. So you're looking at Genesis 22 on the right, but it's essentially the same Bible except printed on a paper that seems to absorb the ink more readily and has lower opacity. Now on the right you have the Allen Long Primer and it's a bit of a darker and larger font on the right but again you have more show through so you have more of a smudgy dark background to the print on the right than you do on the left. I think the left would, would have been nicer, uh, would have been a nicer reading experience had it been printed more darkly. Now I have on the right the uh, Cambridge Cameo, which is a smaller font, it's close to eight points. Uh, again, it's printed much more darkly on the right, and I simply prefer the dark printing. The uh, Cameo also doesn't have very much show through. The uh, Cameo is more portable because of the smaller print, but as your eyes get older you really do appreciate the larger font. Also, I. Th I think I like the line spacing 
in this uh, New American Standard Bible on the left a bit more. One of the real advantages of goat skin over calf skin is that calf skin seems to be uh, more, more vulnerable to injury. I'm not sure if this occurred if when the animal was alive or not, but uh, mine came with these streaks that I think you can see there. Indentations, some more markings here. The, uh, the text block is actually the the real quality aspect of this old Bible. The, uh, the cover isn't much, and I think this, is, this uh, liner is a real weakness. And that's what the anecdotal evidence is as well. But the paper is very nice, so this is a very good candidate, I think, for a rebind. It may be at some point I'll decide to have that done, because the print is very crisp and sharp. I would say that the New American Standard Bible is the most literal modern translation available. It's not as literal in my view as the New King, King James Version, the King James Version of the American Standard Version. Um, but let me, let me revise what I said a moment ago. Amongst the modern translations that rely upon the critical editions of the Greek text, this is uh, the most literal of them all. It would certainly be more literal if they moved the translation that they have indicated by the LIT abbreviation in the center column into the text. That would certainly improve things. The 77 edition was more literal than the 95, and that's in large part because the 95 has replaced pronouns with proper names. So particularly in the Gospels where the text actually says he the 95 has replaced a number of those he's with Jesus, and they haven't even mentioned those changes in the margin. Now, the 95 is perhaps the most um, literal modern translation based on the critical text available today, but I don't know if that's still going to be true next year, because in 2020, Lockman intends to bring out a new update to the New American Standard Bible. And what, from what I've seen, it tends to uh, incorporate gender neutrality, gender inclusive language. So there, you may see brothers and sisters in the text instead of just brothers. One of the things that's always uh, bothered me about the New American Standard Bible is um, this expression, with a view to, that's repeated here. And Ephesians. There are a couple of other translations that I disagree with. I think here maybe in Second Thessalonians. Um, this away from. It's hard to find a modern translation that doesn't say away from here in Second Thessalonians 1 9. But I wish they wouldn't. I prefer the King James as from the presence of the Lord. Another thing I hope they change in the 2020, in addition to getting rid of in a view to in Ephesians 1, is um, getting rid of this now in italics here in 1 Peter 3.19. I think they should just let the Greek text speak for itself and not try to change your mind about what it means by inserting that word now. One interesting place where the New American Standard Bible is somewhat less than literal, is in its translation of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, which says essentially, um, be diligent to make uh, your calling and election sure, just almost like in the King James Version. The New American Standard Bible says, uh, therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you, which is kind of an interesting and different take on the Greek. But all that said, um, I do like the New American Standard Bible. I think it's a very good translation. I think it's too bad that they have never translated the uh, so-called Apocrypha. It would be nice for those people who like to have all of the historical books that were included in the Bible uh, it would be nice to have a translation option in the New American Standard for them. Perhaps one year they will decide 
Lockman will decide to do that. I'm looking forward to the um, comfort print editions that Zondervan plans to bring out in 2020, and I hope they continue to make the 1995 available when the 2020 is actually finally printed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this review of this uh, decade-old New American Standard Bible. If you have, remember to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. Thank you very much for your time.